from the purple dominated landscape of Reacton, we make our way over to the green pastures of Thornston. Hello buddy and welcome along then to the Rose Garden for the third round of the Velvet Grand Prix Tour. Hello buddy and welcome back there. My name as always is Frankie. Last time out in the Velvet Grand Prix Tour, it was Yin and Garnet. Uh, Garnet won in the reactor core and they now share the lead with Yin, Renew up into third, Vermilion down uh, to third and Vermilion in fourth and fifth respectively. Meanwhile in the back, Graphite, Power Harmony and Scorched round out the top four. But in the team standings, it is the Flaming Cherries who have now who had a, who have a 100% podium record. They're sitting in first, Team Echo up in second, Mr. Well Jester's in third. As we now look towards our third round of the season, welcome along then to Thornston. The Rose Garden, which is the slowest track on the Valve Grand Prix Tour Candle, specifically that one hairpin turn over there, turn six, the slowest turn of the season. But let's see what teams go where. Some teams opting to double up, like the Bubblegum Ballers, the Peculiar Peaks, the Pyro Prowlers. They're opting to choose their uh, race two runners. But let's see how that shakes out the order here in qualifying. As we're getting ready now, Scorched will be the first to start the lap. We also get to, to get to have a feel of the lap itself here in the Rose Garden. First, starting off first with a very slow uh, uh, turn section. Turns 1 through 4, very, very slow here as we enter into turn 5. This is turn 6 here, the long hairpin. Pretty slow getaway out of turn 6, and then turn 7, 8, and 9 up to turn 12. It's a very standard course here. Really, it's the first handful of turns that are the trickiest for our teams here. As Scorched is about to round off the lap, it's a 22.58 to, to put them in provisionally first place, but they still have... 19 runners left to go. Victoria is one of them. The Clockworks with the poorest qualifying performance so far this season. Both Steam and Victoria could, could not manage to get anywhere higher than 20th place. Hopefully, Victoria would be able to make some progress in this qualifying hour. But let's see how they manage to do to uh, do the track here. Has been so far faster than Scorched time as they run out the lap. It's going to be 21:42. Considerably faster than Dan Scorched's time. But let's see what Moon of the Coastline Crescents uh, manage. As they navigate pretty elegantly through the first few turns here. Let's see how they manage turn 6. It's a pretty clean getaway. Pretty fast getaway out of turn 6. As they enter into turn 7. Turns 8 and 9. This complex here. Very standard affair for these marbles here. As they enter into turns 11 and 12. Let's see how they manage the lap. It's going to be a 20 30. Moon then put themselves up in first place. Not a bad performance then from the Coastline Crescents marble. Coastline Crescents have not ha have not had a good start to the season whatsoever. They want to have that. They want to have a good result now in this in this third round of the championship. As Graphite, oh poor attempt through the through the hairpin, but gets them a little bit of speed out of turn seven. Let's see how they manage the lap here. I don't think it's going to be a faster lap here than Moon. Let's see what Graphite does. It's going to be a 20 38, 800 of a second then. Slower than Moon's time. But of course, uh, as tight as these margins can be, they will uh, be very important going into Q2. It could make the difference between you advancing into Q2 or not making it whatsoever. As Condor now uh, exercises their lap around here. So far has been a pretty slow affair from the captain of the Goldbirds. Let's see how they manage the last few turns here. I think it's already going to be slower and it's going to be very slow time. 21.33 puts them only in third place provisionally. But I do think that the faster times will be towards what Moon has accomplished. I do not think that's going to be a one-off as Sonata now starts their lap. Pretty slow out of those, well, uh, ironically slow turns, but uh, considerably slower than what some other marbles have accomplished. Pretty fast though through turn 6. Let's see how they manage the rest of the lap here. Do the captain of Team Virtuoso. As they run the last, the last few turns here, it's only second place, 2033. Getting closer and closer to Moon then, as Hazard is about to start their lap. Hazard and the Violet of the Violet Vermin, not a good track record in any racing event whatsoever. Have the Violet Vermin. Hopefully they, they, hopefully they want to turn that around here in the Valve Grand Prix Tour, having been, having been invited not too long ago, and having had their home race as well. As Hazard is about to round out the lap here, let's see how they manage. It's going to be a 2016. The Violet Vermin then put themselves up in the lead provisionally. Scorched is out of Q1 contention. Q2 contention, I should say. But what a turn of events here from the Violet Vermin. Hazard put themselves up in a very good position. Uh, Moon over 14, uh, uh, 1.4 tenths slower than, than, than Hazard. As Spirit 
is about to run after lap here. Let's see how they manage. From, from, from what I can see, it's not going to be a very fast lap, and it's not. 22 on 1 puts the, puts the Katsune Rush in 7th. Already out of Q2 contention as Jab of the Scorpius begin their lap. Jab with a very un uh, with a very uncharacteristic race two, but here they are doubling up for the Scorpius in race three as well. Let's see how they manage this lap here. Pretty standard affair from the Scorpius marble from the first handful of turns here. It's going to be a 2019 that puts them up into second place. Just a few, a few hundreds of a second slower than, than the Violet Vermin, but it's going to be second for the Scorpius. As Avian of the Sky Scouts begin their lap, Avian pretty slow out of, this, out of those snail-like uh, sections. Pretty fast through the hairpin though, let's see how they manage the rest of the lap now. But I think those first handful of turns will affect their lap pretty, uh, pretty, pretty severely here. As they're about to run the lap, it's not going to be a fast time, it's going to be 22.41, puts them in ninth. Ooh, disaster here from Avian of the Sky Scouts as 10 ball starts their lap of the cue balls. Pretty standard affair, pretty fast getaway out of turn 6 into turn 7. Pretty standard stuff now. Let's see how they manage the rest of the lap here. Up to turn 11 into turn 12. It's going to be a 2008. That puts the cue balls with 10 ball in. In the lead, not bad then from the from the cue balls marble. It didn't look like a fast time all that much. However, it, it did pay off as Himalaya now begins their lap from the peculiar peaks. Pretty fast getaway out of turn six into uh, out of turn seven. Pretty fast getaway as well as well. Let's see how they manage the last few turns here. Considerably faster than the rest of the track. It's going to be a 2027. From the Peculiar Peaks Marble, Himalaya up to 4th place as Thorn now begin their lap. And look at, look at the cheer from the crowd now cheering their marble on. Thorn of course 2nd place finish in their first ever race. Uh, Spine did not have the best, uh, the same luck as their teammate did in the, in the previous race. But let's see how they managed the, the, this lap here. It has not been a very impressive lap from the Grim Roses Marble so far. It's going to be a 2056 already. Cannot make it into Q2. It's a middling spot here for the Grim Roses Marble, which has been a bit of a trend for a lot of uh, a lot for, for the host marbles. The Sabres, of course, with Port started 11th, and uh, well, Parasite of the Violet Permanent started all the way down in 18th. As oh, Swirl making a massive mistake into turn six, almost getting stopped completely. I do not think it's going to be a good time here from the Bubblegum Ballers Marble. It was looking so good at the beginning. It's only going to be 13th, second to last, only faster than than the Pyre Prowlers marble. As Yen of the Balls of Zen, another great marble here, winner of the first ever Valve Grand Prix Tour race. Very happy about that. Pretty slow out of turn two. Let's see the manager of the lap here. We've nope. We've seen from Avian just how bad, how badly that can affect your entire lap here. Pretty slow into turn six as well. Is Yen. I, I don't think it's going to be a good lap here from the Balls of Zen marble. As they're about to round out the lap here, it's going to be a 21.58, only 11th behind Victoria, go the balls of Zen. As Uramaki of the Sushi Squad now about to start their lap here. Already pretty fast getaway out of turn 1, T turn 2, 3 and 4. Uh, they're managing it really well here. The Sushi Squad have been very good at these very tricky sections of, the tr of tracks. Normally their weakness tends to be in high speed corners here. But the slow speed corners, they're masters at it. As Uramaki with a very decent lap here. I think it might be a contender for, for a Q2 appearance. It's going to be a 20... Oh, 2037 is not enough to put them into Q2. Disaster as 10 ball and Hazard have both, ma have both made it into Q2 as Starboard now begin their lap from the Sailors. Starboard, not a bad getaway out of, t out of the first few turns here. Turn 6, not, not bad either. Let's see how they manage the rest of the lap here. Starboard has been quite impressive so far for the Sailors. A 7th place finish. Last time out in the reactor core. And it's only gonna... It's good enough for 2nd place. Oh! 100 of a second! Slower than 10 balls time! Ooh, I'm sure Starboard is not happy about that. They're into Q2, guaranteed. But oh, that must sting quite a bit here for the Sailors. They could have had the fastest Q1 time. As Jester now uh, continuing their lap. But still, a Q2 appearance for the Sailors is something that they sorely need. That makes it two Q2s in a row for the Sailors. 
as Jess is about to finish their lap. 2049 puts them up into 10th place as Jab guaranteed to go into Q2. Bio now, the third to last marble to run after their teammate uh, won in the uh, after their teammate finished second in the reactor core with with Paul as well, giving them 24 points. Not bad then from Team Echo. As let's see what Bio does here. As they're about to run out the lap here, I think it's going to be a good time. It's going to be 12th. As we have one more marble left to go now, and it's guard is Vermilion of the Flaming Cherries. Himalaya now guaranteed to go into Q2. That also makes it two Q2s in a row for the Peculiar Peaks. But let's see what Mo let's see if Moon is able to make it through. Vermilion, a very fast marble here. Of course, uh, third place in round one. Garnet first place in round two. Flaming Cherries on a high at the moment. I don't think it's going to be a very good time here from Vermilion to Flaming Cherries. They did start tenth in their first ever race. It's only good enough for 11th, and Moon does make it into Q2. And Tenbo then will take that one point in the fastest Q1 time. Not bad then from the Q balls. It's Starboard in second, Hazard, Jab, Himalaya, and Moon. In seventh place, we have Sonata, Uramaki, Graphite, Jester, Vermilion, Thorn starts their home race in 12th. Biocondor, Victoria, Yen, Spirit, Avian, Swirl, and Scorched with a very slow time. As we already make our way through Q2, the Q2 shootout, of course, as always, three laps will determine our grid for tomorrow's race, or at least the top six. With Temple in the lead, it's Starboard in second, Hazard, Jab, Emily, and Moon, as we're about to start off the five lights, they're turning green now, and we're off for the Q2 shootout, it's a good start for Temple, who covers off Hazard and Port, Port uh, Temple now, holds their lead, it's Starboard in second, Himalaya up to third, Hazard, Jab and Moon, oh, Himalaya makes a mistake into turn 6, they're now down to 4th place, the top 3 as, as they were at the start of the race, it's Tembo, Starboard, Hazard, Himalaya, Jab and Moon, as Tembo now extending that gap now to Starboard of the Sailors, Hazard still there in 3rd, uh, waiting for an opportunity from either Tembo or Starboard to make a mistake, but Tembo slow out of turn 6, Starboard now takes the lead, it's Hazard still in 3rd, Jab, uh, has taken fourth from Himalaya as we're about to approach the final lap of the race here But it's still starboard in a good in a good lead here over Temple Temple is not able to make up that momentum over the sailors marble Oh a uh, contact there with this with uh, with starboard But is not good enough to put them into first place as they're about to round out the last few turns of the lap here I do not think Temple is gonna make any more attempts against starboard here It's still a second place start for Temple as starboard is about to cross the line to win the pole shootout. And they will take ball for tomorrow's race. Hazard then stays in third. Himalaya retake for Utuk fourth from Jab. And Moon started where they finished. Finished where they started in sixth place. It wasn't a very uh, it wasn't a very eventful race, this one, but it did it did have a very good overtake. Uh, this moment right here from Starboard, taking advantage of Temple's mistake and getting an additional two points for the sailors. Temple, pretty got it not to start, not to have Paul after taking the Q1 time, but it's they're still good enough for second place. Hazard then with a good third place. So then, Starboard will start on pole for tomorrow's race. It's Temple in second, Hazard up to third. Himalaya and Jab and Moon round out the top six. And the overall standings after the qualifiers, there's no change at the top. Sailors then. Up to 30 points, Kiowals up to 20 points. But that's it from us from the Valve Grand Prix Tour. Tune in tomorrow for the race here at the Rose Garden. As for myself, I've been Frankie, and I'll see you next time.